Hello guys. Just getting my computer set up. Okay, I think we are good to go. <laughs> Let's try and make this work. Yay! <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Foodie Friday. Let's get myself set up all over again. Oh my gosh. So I've just done a uh, 25 minute recording um, and my computer needed something doing to it. So I've streamed it and there was nobody there to watch it. Thank you Kylie for letting me know. Um, so my name is Odette, welcome along to Foodie Friday. We made it, I hope you've uh, tuned in and I hope you can see this. Um, today I'm just going to be discussing a few tips and tricks, tips and tricks in the kitchen uh, when baking raw treats and using our beautiful oils. So um, I've already made a pile of stuff um, to my last audience, which was nobody. So we're just going to go uh, over and recap a few things. Um, I love baking raw treats because you pretty much can't stuff it up. So um, if you're baking a cake normally with eggs and milk and baking powder and flour and whatnot, when you're mixing it, it doesn't taste the same as the final product, okay? You're, you're weighing it up on how well you've sieved the flour and um, if you put the right amount of baking powder in and everything's going to gel together for that final product. Whereas when you're making more treats, when you're mixing it, it tastes pretty much exactly the same as it's going to at the end. So, if, for example, if you make the mixture somehow too wet, you can just add some more ground cashews or coconut or um, blitzed up dates with cashews, etc., um, to bind it again. Um, if it's too dry, you just add some more rice malt syrup or coconut oil, coconut cream, um, and that rectifies the problem. So it's super easy to fix. Um, if it's not tasty enough for you, you can add, say you're making a, a Jaffa ball, um, a few more drops of tangerine, orange or citrus fresh. Easy peasy, okay? So um, my favorite base mixture to use um, when making balls and slices is my chocolate crunch base, which is coconut, dates and almonds. Um, normally when you're making anything, um, I'm not big on measurements, so um, I'm going to make this as accurate as I can. If you're making a slice with raw ingredients, you want to have two cups of your dry stuff, so like your coconut, um, cashews, your almonds, macadamias, etc., to one cup of dates. So with my dates, I always soak them, um, boil the kettle, pour hot water on them, leave them a couple of minutes and then strain them. That's just gonna soften them and help them blend and bind with your other ingredients when they're in the food processor or Thermomix. And um, it's also um, helping your uh, appliance live longer. So your harder dates, um, if you use pitted dates or medjool dates, that, you know, they're quite hard when they're banging around inside your um, food processor or Thermomix. So by soaking them, it's just um, putting your your um, appliance under less load. So um, yeah, so my um, base recipe, my fave, all time fave, lucky I've got some of this left, I didn't use it all, is um, almonds, coconut and dates. One cup of almonds, one cup of coconuts to two cups of dates. And I repeat, repeat that over and over. So this is probably three lots or four lots blitzed in the Thermomix. Um, and you can make anything of mine in balls or you can make it in a slice. So yeah, plenty of options there. Um, with the that base, so um, yes, I made balls in front of my live audience, which didn't exist before too. So with that, um, with that base mix, with the raw chocolate crunch mix, you, your almonds and your um, coconut and dates, blitz it up in a bowl. Now I add rice malt syrup. You can buy it like this from Coles or Woolies uh, or online, however you do your shopping. Um, I add the rice malt syrup in because it adds is a bit more of a binder. Um, years and years ago, I used to use a pile of coconut oil and that was my binder. Um, but you'll find, I don't know, if you buy like a bliss ball from um, a cafe, etc., cetera, um, or you've made ones in the past, you go to a cafe, you go, oh, I want that bliss ball, thanks. They put it in a brown paper bag and you even get to the car and the oil is literally dripping out of it, especially if you're in stinking hot Queensland with its humidity or WA where it's just, you know, you've had those few weeks of 40 and the coconut oil comes through the bag and the ball starts disintegrating. And I find coconut oil extremely overpowering to taste. So I find the rice malt syrup 
um, if a, a recipe calls for a cup of coconut or half a cup, I always at least halve that with rice malt syrup because that just gives it that more chewy consistency and a really nice consistency in the mouth. It's not super, super sweet um, and it's vegan. So um, it's not like your honey, your maple syrup, um, your rice malt syrups, um, more economical also than your maple syrup. And it's got that syrupy um, consistency. So everything sticks and gels really well together. Um, I've also, I also added um, cacao or even cocoa powder, whatever you have. Um, mix that again when it's mixing, grab a spoon, taste it. Okay, you're the one that's gonna be eating it. You wanna make it um, delicious, suited to your tastes, okay? just because a recipe states two tablespoons of something. If it's not uh, perfect for your taste, then um, yeah, add what you need to. You might want to add more cacao um, along the way. So with that, I just split it into three bowls. I blitzed a pile just like this and I split it into three bowls. So the first bowl was like our control bowl, so to speak. Um, mixed it up, added a splash of rice, a good splash of rice malt syrup, a little splash of coconut oil. Coconut oil helps it set and hold its form um, once it's refrigerated or frozen. So that's your setting agent. Rice malt's more of your binding agent. Um, so we've made some, in our three bowls, we did like the chocolate, they're beautiful. Then in the other bowl, we added peppermint oil. In the other bowl, we added, um, we, I did, you didn't see me, um, peppermint. And in the other one, we did tangerine. So you've got a chalk mint and a chalk orange or a jaffa. Now, there's a big difference with your citrus oils versus like your peppermint or say your geranium. So these guys are quite strong, um, whereas your citrus oils like your lemon and your tangerine. Um, if you slip up and put a few extra drops of your citrus oils, no big deal. But just watch if you're making your chalk mint or your Turkish delight with your geranium. Um, they're really quite potent oils. So just go easy, a couple of drops, give it a stir, give it a taste, and then add another drop at a time as, as, as you're mixing. So um, yeah, there you have it. One recipe, three different flavors, and they taste completely different. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be able to create such different flavors um, at a time um, with the same recipe um, using our beautiful oils. The other one I like to do with these chocolate balls is a lime, and ginger. So you can use the lime and ginger oils. Um, I love the lime oil, but I'm a bit of a um, stickler for texture. So I love to add my ginger oil for that nice smooth ginger flavor, but I do like to grate a little bit of fresh ginger. So when you're eating the ball, you get that real punch of ginger along the way. So yeah, that, that's our balls. Again, you can press it in a slice. You don't have to, have to um, make it into a ball. Um, when you are, um, Setting these, I always just freeze it because it's quicker and then once they're set and solid, you can put them into your containers and um, yeah, chop them, put them in your containers and then they're back in the freezer. They do have a life of about three months in the freezer and not that anything ever lasts that long in the freezer, especially when it's chocolate orientated. Um, if you're gonna dribble, 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 drizzle these in chocolate, um, put them in the freezer. So when you drizzle the chocolate, the chocolate sticks straight away and it doesn't just like melt all over it and become quite messy. Also depends on the type of chocolate um, that you're going to use. So today when I made my bounty bars earlier, um, I chopped off, trimmed off the edges and then chopped them all into rectangles then froze them on the tray. When I drizzled them earlier, can you see how that chocolate is just sitting on top of there? That's also because of um, yeah, freezing the bars first. Second thing, I did use um, a thicker chocolate. So a lot of your 85% chocolates are quite runny. Um, so when you're spooning them, don't you dollop big spoons because they will just blob everywhere. Um, this time I just used Cadbury Old Gold 70%, which is super, super thick chocolate. So I had to use coconut oil into the chocolate to um, yeah, thin it down just a little bit, but not too much. Um, in the chocolate, this time we've got um, tangerine in there. I love chocolate orange. So um, yeah, I'll put tangerine oil in this chocolate. So my bounty bars are plain. They are just made out of coconut and dates. So two cups of coconut per one cup of dates blitzed over in batches um, and blend together with your rice malt syrup and your coconut oil, um, press it in the pan and yeah, just giving them a little bit of a taste um, difference. So you can have your plain bounty, you can have, yeah, 
peppermint, you can have lemon, you can have um, Turkish delight, you can have Jaffa. There's so many flavor combinations. I just love that I can eat um, raw treats in large quantities. So you might just blitz the same combination like this one, your almonds, your coconut and your dates over and over again. You might have bowls of it and you can press it in pans with different flavor combos using your oils, which is wonderful. Um, speaking about different flavor combinations, I'll just tell you a few of my really, really favorite. If you're making like say a raw cheesecake with raspberries or something like that, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, a couple of oils that go really well, especially with your raspberries. Tangerine goes wonderful um, with your raspberries. And another one, which you probably wouldn't think, which is also uh, one of our 36, um, culinary oils that are compliant with the food standards of Australia and New Zealand. I know, how exciting is that? Um, is your lavender. So lavender is quite potent as well. So one drop at a time and go easy, but it goes lovely with the raspberry. Um, and another flavour combo I wanted to talk about is, um, which I use all the time, um, it's one of my best selling balls actually. It's a turmeric jaffa ball. So same base as this, yep, almonds, coconut and dates turmeric powder and tangerine oil. And then I make them into balls and I drizzle them with the chocolate. The combo of the turmeric and the tangerine plus the chocolate um, is absolutely to die for. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Yes, lemon myrtle is beautiful in the kitchen. If you're not so much of a raw baker, but a traditional kind of baker, um, something like melting moments, yo-yos, uh, cakes etc so in your icing tangerine goes lovely orange goes lovely lemon goes lovely citrus fresh goes lovely but your lemon myrtle is absolutely a game changer especially in your melting moment um you know shortbread cookies with the cream in the middle delicious the lemon myrtle is absolutely sensational because that's also one of our 36 um culinary oils compliant with the food standards of australia and new zealand um lastly i just wanted to cover if um, you're trying to watch the you know, muffin top a little bit uh, and you're trying to cut down on the sugars that you eat, so not just processed sugars, but like things like dates are still quite high in sugar, um, natural sugar. So um, in this bowl, earlier I uh, blitzed up some coconut and cashews. So I normally go uh, three cups of coconut to one cup of cashews and I blitz that to a really fine crumb. Um, and then again, I've mixed it with um, our rice malt syrup just to help bind it and then the coconut oil obviously helps set it. So I'm going to squeeze that into little balls and I'm going to press them. I've added also added peppermint oil. So if you remember the old mint patties in the green wrapper that have got really small <laughs> over the years, um, we're going to make those. So that's all I use, the coconut, the cashews, and then obviously the rice milk syrup and the coconut oil. Uh, make the ball, press them into a little patty, pop them on a tray like so, and you freeze them till they go rock hard. Then you have your chocolate. And with the chocolate, um, when we dip them, not, it, won't, it won't, won't happen well right now because these are frozen. But when we dip them, they're solid hard, hot, that's really hard, like biscuits. And you dip them in half and then you spin it around and then you dip it in that other quarter. And then they come out and they look something like this. Oh, and I've just put that over. But you get the drift, okay? So you dip it in, quarter turn, in again, then you're left with this little wedge and it's beautiful for presentation. Again, um, if you um, don't, don't like mint, you don't wanna make mint patties, you can um, maybe grate some orange rind for a little bit of color, then add your tangerine oil in there and um, dip it in the chocolate. You can leave them plain and then flavor your chocolate. So whatever chocolate I always have left from dipping our things, um, I've got chocolate molds, love hearts, dinosaurs, all sorts of things for us and the kids. And um, yeah tip them into the moulds, let them set, and then you've got easy little chocolate bribes for yourself or the kids for later on. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover today. I don't want to bore you. So um, if you have any questions, please comment on the post. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you later on. I'm just going to go wash my hands before I touch my computer and turn it off. Uh, most of my recipes are... Um, super easy they're um, available online 
my Facebook page, Mama O, has loads of free recipes on there. Um, you go into photo albums and you'll see, you go to photos, photo albums, and click on sweet recipes. And you see loads and loads of um, bliss ball recipes from protein balls to plain balls to cookies, everything that you can add oils to. Uh, another one of my favorite things is to add some tangerine oil to granola. If you make granola, it's absolutely delicious. Um, or my website has um, about six different eBooks uh, online that you can get them. We've got one um, up at the moment. There's lots actually, There's, but they would have one up there um, cooking with essential oils, raw treats and essential oils. So um, yeah, it just gives you a little bit of a step-by-step -step guide, but yeah, it's pretty easy to follow. Um, like I said, just bit by bit, if you're using your oils, um, just a drop at a time, go easy. And uh, yeah, I hope you've learned something new today. Thank you for having me. And um, I hope to see you all again really, really soon. Take care now, bye.